the modern human lineage leading to the ancestors of people today was in sub-Saharan Africa. For centuries, Europe was imagined as a land of permanence, a continent where Ice Age tribes endured unbroken through time. But what if that was never true? Hidden in ancient bones is a story of erasure and rebirth, told not by myth, but by DNA. Scientists have now read the genomes of people who lived more than 40,000 years ago and discovered that every person in Europe today descends from three vanished civilizations that rose and fell in succession. Africa has been at the center for millions of years, but in this key period, it's not clear where that is. The first hunters, the first farmers, and the horsemen of the steppe. Three worlds that collided, vanished, and fused into one. In labs across Leipzig, Copenhagen, and Boston, geneticists pieced together over 13,000 fragments of ancient DNA. When they assembled them, they uncovered something astonishing. Europe is not the story of a single people, but a long chain of migrations that reshaped everything from skin tone to language. Western hunter-gatherers painted mammoths on cave walls beneath ice. Anatolian farmers crossed the sea with the first seeds of civilization. Steppe herders thundered in from the east, bringing the power of the horse and the roots of Indo-European speech. Each wave left something behind, a trace, a word, a gene. And with every arrival came a question, what happened to those who came before? You're watching Stone and Bone, where archaeology and genetics meet to reveal the hidden origins of humankind. 45,000 years ago, modern humans entered Europe, following herds through frozen valleys. The world they found was brutal. Ice a mile thick covered much of the continent. Yet in its southern edges, life endured. These early humans met another species, the Neanderthals. They lived beside them, traded genes, and then outlasted them. Today, 1-3% to of every European genome still carries Neanderthal code. In Russia's Kostenki and Romania's Oase Caves, scientists uncovered the oldest modern European remains. They belonged to people with dark skin, blue eyes, and the hunter's DNA lineage, known as haplogroup 1-2. Their descendants, known as Western hunter-gatherers, survived the last ice age in tiny refugees of Iberia and the Balkans, perhaps numbering only a few thousand. But when the glaciers melted, they spread north again, populating a continent reborn. Along the Danube, they left traces of a strange and beautiful world. At Lipinski Veer, 9,000 years ago, people carved half-fish, half-human deeds into stone and built shrines along the riverbank. They lived almost entirely on fish, their lives balanced between water and earth. For nearly two millennia, they thrived in isolation, but their peace was about to be broken. Far to the southeast, in the hills of central Turkey, another revolution was beginning. In Bonkaklu and Katalhoyuk, people planted the first grains tamed sheep and goats, and built villages that would outlast generations. These were the Anatolian farmers, carriers of haplogroups, G2A and J2, the founders of Europe's Neolithic age. When geneticists extracted DNA from their clay floor burials, they discovered that these farmers were direct ancestors of the communities that later appeared hundreds of miles away. Farming, it turned out, hadn't just spread as an idea the farmers themselves had moved. By 7,000 BCE, they were sailing the Mediterranean and following the Danube into Europe, carrying lighter skin, darker eyes, and the knowledge of cultivation. Their villages appeared from Greece to France, their livestock and seeds transforming the land. For a time, they coexisted uneasily with the hunter-gatherers. Two Europes, one of the plow, one of the spear. But around 5,400 BCE, everything changed. The great farming settlements collapsed. Villages were abandoned. Populations plummeted. There were no burn layers, no battlefields, only silence. And then came the bones. Inside their teeth, scientists found traces of a deadly visitor, Yersinia pestis, the ancient plague. It spread through Europe's dense farming villages wiping out communities in waves. The old world of the farmers was dying. 
and something waited on the horizon to take its place. From the endless grasslands of southern Russia and Ukraine, they came. The Yamnaya, nomadic herders of the steppe. They were tall, broad-shouldered, and moved with the wind. They rode horses, built wagons, and buried their chiefs beneath great earthen mounds called Kyrgyz. Around 3000 BCE, they began pushing westward, bringing new technology and a new way of life. Archaeologists once believed these movements were slow and cultural. DNA proved otherwise. The men of the corded ware culture in Central Europe, long assumed to descend from local farmers, turned out to share most of their ancestry, over 70%, with the Yamnaya. Within just a few centuries, Europe's genetic map was rewritten. In places like Germany and Britain, up to 90% of male lineages disappeared. Entire populations were replaced. But how? What do you think? Was it disease, conquest, or something else that allowed the step riders to overtake entire civilizations so swiftly? Tell me your theory in the comments. Then let's see what the DNA really says next. The answer may lie in the plague that had already crippled the Neolithic world. The bacterium Yersinia pestis, found in the teeth of the dead, spread like wildfire through Europe's farming villages. Crops rotted, families vanished, and entire cultures collapsed in silence. When the Yamnia arrived, they may have already carried a natural resistance to this pathogen. Others argue it was warfare or climate shifts that dried the farmlands, forcing desperate migrations. Whatever the cause, the result was the same. The world of the farmers fell, and a new one rose in its place. The Yamnaya's DNA carried echoes from even further east, from the forests of Siberia and faint traces of the same ancient lineage found in Native American ancestors. It was a bridge across continents, an ancient thread connecting peoples half a world apart. They also brought something invisible but enduring, a language. The roots of Mater, Potter, Brother, and Fire trace back to their tongue, the Proto-Indo-European language that would spread from India to Ireland. And with it came new gods, new myths, and the dawn of the Bronze Age, a world forged by motion, conquest, and change. By 2500 BCE, the Age of Upheaval gave way to something new. Europe had become a continent reborn, its people no longer defined by where they came from, but by what they had become together. The hunter-gatherers, the farmers, and the herders had fused into a single evolving population. Ancient DNA now reveals the balance of their legacy. Roughly half of modern European ancestry traces back to the Yamnaya herders of the steppe, around one-third to the Anatolian farmers who brought agriculture, and the remainder to the first Ice Age hunters who never truly vanished. But this fusion was not uniform. In Ireland and Northern Europe, the Yamnaya influence runs strongest. Tall stature, lighter features, and the enduring gift of lactose tolerance from the gene known as Etzli-13910T. Sardinia stands apart, preserving the genetic fingerprint of the early Neolithic farmers. Finland carries traces of far older migrations from the Siberian tundra, a reminder that no era of settlement ever truly stopped the movement of people. Genetic studies reveal not extinction, but survival through transformation. Each wave absorbed the last. Every tribe that vanished lived on through the blood of the next. The story of Europe was never one of purity. It was one of adaptation, of crisis turned to rebirth. And that pattern would continue into the languages, rituals, and identities of the civilizations that followed. The Yamnaya brought more than genes and wagons. They brought identity. From their speech came the foundation of nearly every major European language. The word Mater in Latin, Mater in Sanskrit, Mother in English, all descend from the same ancestral sound carried west on horseback. Their rituals honored sky and fire, their burials marked by power and symmetry. The farmers' earthbound gods blended with theirs, creating new pantheons that would echo into Greek and Norse myth alike. Across the continent, copper turned to bronze. 
Trade routes linked the Black Sea to the Atlantic. Europe had become a continent of movement and invention, its cultures merging like its bloodlines. Yet, in the remote forests and northern coasts, remnants of the first Europeans still endured. Western hunter-gatherer lineages lingered for thousands of years longer, surviving in pockets untouched by conquest. So what do you think? Did Europe's earliest peoples really vanish, or do their traces still live on in us? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, because what science is uncovering next might just change how we define ancestry itself. Their DNA whispers from within us, reminding humanity that no civilization truly disappears. It simply becomes part of the next one, rewritten by time, yet never erased. Modern science can now map these vanished peoples inside living bodies. Using ancient DNA and genome sequencing, researchers can trace the faint echoes of those migrations, hunter-gatherer fragments, Anatolian farmer clusters, and the unmistakable steppe ancestry carried across half the world. Every European nation holds a different balance. Spaniards carry more of the early farmers who once tilled Iberia. The Irish and Scots bear strong steppe roots from the Yamnaya expansion. Finns and Estonians preserve eastern traces linked to Siberia. Even beyond Europe, faint genetic fingerprints of those steppe herders appear among Central and South Asian populations, a reminder that Europe's story was never confined to Europe alone. And the more we uncover, the more the old borders dissolve. Genes travel where maps do not. Language, culture, and blood blend across millennia until the past becomes inseparable from the present. The ghosts of the Ice Age, the Neolithic, and the Bronze Age still speak, not in words, but in the living code of every cell. Modern Europeans are the descendants of every migration, every collapse, every rebirth. Inside their cells lies a record of 45,000 years of struggle and survival. The blue eyes of a Mesolithic forager, the olive skin of an Anatolian farmer, and the tall frame of a Yamnaya rider still exist together in the people of today. The myth of a single, ancient race has vanished under the weight of evidence carved into bone. Europe was never built by one people. It was shaped by all of them. Its story is a chain of arrivals, each adding something new. Technology, language, art, and resilience. So when you look in the mirror, remember, you are the echo of three forgotten worlds. A survivor of ice, a farmer of earth, a rider of wind. The living proof that identity is not born from isolation, but from everything we've become together. If this journey through time and ancestry fascinated you, like this video, share it with others, and subscribe to Stone and Bone, where every strand of DNA tells a forgotten story waiting to be unearthed.